shit. The Neon Demon is directed by Nicholas Winding Refn and stars Ella Fanning, Jenna Malone, Christina Hendricks, Keanu Reeves, among others, and is the story of a young girl who moves to L.A. She wants to be a model, and much to the horror of models that have already been in L.A. for a long time that are trying to get ahead, she plows right through them and into the spotlight, which causes some problems. Drive is probably his most accessible movie, maybe that and Bronson, and I suppose the Pusher films are a little more accessible as well. But with movies like Valhalla Rising and Only God Forgives, he showed himself to be a very experimental filmmaker, which is something I admire. I like directors who make films that are ballsy, that are different. And with The Neon Demon, Nicholas Winding Refn, without a doubt, has made his most fucked up movie. Comparing it to Only God Forgives, it is a more straightforward narrative. There is more of a story, there's a lot more dialogue. Ella Fanning is very good as this aspiring model, Jessie. A lot of people are starting to feel very jealous of her, which causes a lot of animosity. There's her makeup artist played by Jenna Malone. There are two other models who have been in LA for a longer period of time, and they're starting to get very upset about all the attention she's getting. There's the owner of a seedy motel she stays at, played by Keanu Reeves, who has some strange motivations of his own, and there are so many different ways to interpret this movie. In fact, I'm still reeling from it. There are aspects of this film that are visually stunning and brilliant. Obviously, the cinematography is going to be very good. If you've seen any of Refn's movies, you know that. This is easily the best cinematography I've seen all year. The, the use of colors is extraordinary. The soundtrack by Cliff Martinez is euphorically amazing. I mean, one of the best of the year, easily. Visually, this movie is an A+. It's stunning. It's beautiful. It's just that at times it is very much so an exercise of style over substance. And if you've seen any of Refn's films, then you probably expected that going in. Is that really a problem, though? It depends on who you are. If you like films like that, if you like films that use visual storytelling to make you understand something, to make you think about something, then you're gonna really enjoy this film. But if you want more answers and more of a straightforward story and a straightforward thorough line narrative, then you're gonna be disappointed because this movie's fucking nuts. The last third act of this film is insane. And I won't spoil anything for you, unlike other critics who, for whatever reason, feel the need to ruin this ending because I had it ruined for me by a professional film critic who decided to choose their excerpt for Rotten Tomatoes explaining exactly what happens in the third act of this movie, which really pissed me off. I'm not gonna do that to you guys because I'm here for you. But it's insane. There's a lot of crazy shit. And it's the kind of ending that's designed to shock you. It's designed to make you go like, what? And it will appall and disturb many. But when you really examine the statement that's being made about the way people can become beauty obsessed and the way people can just become so horrible because they're so obsessed with their own vanity and just how far people will go to get to the top. This movie examines all of that in very visually disturbing ways. Keanu Reeves, as I said, is in the movie and he's very good in the movie and I liked his performance in the movie. He was very entertaining, but then his character gets taken in this strange direction that felt totally out of left field and he's just sort of dropped. And I was just like, you know, what happened with that? For me personally, despite the fact that Ella Fanning I thought was very good in this movie, luminous, scary, just really good. My favorite actress in the movie actually was Jenna Malone. I think she steals the entire film. She gives the most daring performance performance. He does some stuff that's stuff. That's just, that's what I'll say. But just, she, <laughs> but I really respect her because I haven't seen an actress all year give a performance this just, just out there. Just like, what? You did it. You did that. You actually did that. Good for you. That's kind of fucked up, but you did it. Like, okay. And where this movie fell apart for me was the same place that only God forgives did. Whenever Refn tries to fetishize whatever depraved act he is depicting on the screen. And he did that very much so in Only God Forgives with an over-the-top torture scene. In this film he does it again with sequences that are so over-the-top and unbelievable that it had a older man sitting next to me who at the beginning of the film went shh to his wife, audibly going, oh for heaven's sake near the end. And part of me really respects that side of Refn for making a film that is so balls out insane towards the third act. But then the other part of me is like, what does this really do for your story? Or is this just you being a pornographer? And that's a direct quote. I'm not insulting the man. He has referred to himself as a pornographer. He has said he is someone who films things that he wants to see. 
And, you know, you got some fucked up fetishes, buddy. <laughs> but if I'm being honest with myself, I was consistently riveted by The Neon Demon. It's a visually stunning movie with a lot of great visual metaphors that stick with you. And I want to see it again. I want to see it again right now. If I had the Blu-ray, I would pop it in right as soon as I was done filming this and watch it. It has staying power. It has the ability to become a cult classic. In fact, I think it will become a cult classic. It is a movie that a lot of people are gonna be bothered and offended by. And if you are not a fan of strange, different art films, just stay away. If you like a more straightforward narrative, stay away. But if you like films that are different, that do take chances, that do take artistic risks, then The Neon Demon might entertain you. I'm gonna give the film a B plus. Weird as shit movie, but I kinda dug it. Eventually, I will probably do an analyzed video, similar to Only God Forgives and Drive. I have to see it again, I have to see it again and again and again probably before I can do that, just like I did with Enemy, but I would like to do that for you guys. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Check out the film if you get a chance to this weekend. It is weird and different, and I think that that should be supported even though some of it goes a little too far. As always guys, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.